Even so, he's keen to find the lost item as soon as possible. And there it is. Now he just needs to retrace his steps and exit the cage. Well, this is the item that is uh, on the floor. What I'm going to do now is I'll pop that into a box and then it'll go back into um, surgery. Completely different warehouse, right? Imagine, after this little activity, having to program those robots to do exactly what you want them to do. Okay? Now the details in which you give those robots instructions are much finer than what you guys gave through these words. Okay? A lot finer. Can you think about it? How many of you come on to what they said about programming the products on the shelves. How do they do it? What's that? Um, they give each one a okay, everything has a different barcode. So they take the barcode, I don't think I have a barcode up here. Let's say there's a barcode on this. So they scan the barcode for the product, then they scan the bin on the tower of where they're gonna put that product, Scan it so the computer knows where it is, and they put it on the shelf and walk away. And that computer's got it memorized right where that product is. Then what they say about how many different towers have that product. Did you catch that? They put the product, the same product. So let's say Amazon has a hundred of these. They're going to put these items in the warehouse all over. Because their employees that stand up at the front that have to bag everything, if they if they have somebody order this bolt, okay, it's called the bolt. They scan it, and this bolt is on the other side of the factory. It's going to take a while for it to get over to where they can pull it off. So they keep them spread out all over the factory so that it pulls the closest tower over so they can pull the product off. Does that make sense? Okay. How big do you think their warehouses are? Have any of you seen one? They are massive. If you go to Vegas, Vegas has one of the biggest ones in the West. Uh, just before you get into town, there's an Amazon building. It's at least a mile long. And it's probably that deep. That's how massive they are. Uh, we have one, we have two here in Utah. There's one for the regular products that's by the airport. And then there's one in South Jordan that just handles large items like tables and chairs and appliances and stuff like that, okay? Um, but imagine having to program those rob robots to do all that. It'd be insane, it'd be crazy, okay? So that's what you guys are gonna be doing. You're gonna be programming robots. Now we have a couple different types. Um, we have these bolts. Um, if you have a phone, like an iPhone, I think Android works with them, you're more than welcome to download the program or the um, app to run the bolts onto your phones. Um, I put up here the name of the app. Um, you're welcome to download it and use your phone instead of my iPads. But we do have the iPads and you can use those. These are a little bit different though. Let's see if I can get it to work. Okay, it's connected. So the question is, is it connected properly? Okay, so these obviously mostly just run around on the floor. So you're going to program these to do certain things around the floor, places to go. Okay, the robot has been disconnected because its battery is critically low. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, which, by the way, if you choose to purchase one of these, um, I was thinking about it this morning, and if I bought one of these for my home, I would probably go with the bolts rather than the minis. They do have minis. But to, pro to charge these, all I have to do is go in, drop them in the case, and it charges, whereas the minis, you have to take 
the ball off and take the inside out, plug the inside in, and charge it. It's just a little more difficult. So those are the bolts. We're also going to use Lego Mindstorms. Okay? Have you ever used Lego Mindstorms? Yes. A couple people. Okay? So these, you're going to be able to program the motors to run the wheels, to go forward, backwards, turn left, right, whatever. Uh, this um, touch sensor here, if this gets triggered, so you press it in, then it'll move on to the next set of instructions. This is like the cameras on the front of the Amazon robots, and then it controls distance, so it's always measuring to make sure it's not going to run into something. Can you not do that, please? And this is sound. So you're going to be able to program it to listen for loud noises. Or it could be a soft noise. But it's going to make your decibels. And if your sound reaches a certain decibel, it's going to trigger it to do something else. So with these, there will be three programs I'm going to ask you to complete. Um, they're going to be posted on Canvas. The first two are going to be... I'm telling you exactly what I want the robot to do, step by step. Okay. So I'm going to tell you in pretty simple terms what I want the robot to do. For example, it may be that I tell you I want your robot to move forward seven feet. So you're going to tell it to move forward seven feet. And I'll say, okay, have it turn to the right, 90 degrees, move forward until it touches the wall. So I'm going to give you that basic set of instructions. Okay? The third program will be a little bit more difficult. I'm going to have a maze, and your robot has got to enter the maze, find its way around the maze, and come out the other side. Okay? And you're going to program it to do it. How you program it will be completely up to you. Any questions? Okay, so next question I have. What are you going what do you think is going to happen if you're absent? How are you going to be able to do this at home? What's that? Canvas. Probably on Canvas. Okay, so if you're going to be absent, especially if you're gone for an extended period of time, email me and we'll work something out. Okay? Yeah? How are we going to be doing this at school? What do you mean? Like, when we come to school and we have to program this stuff, are we just going to, like, all have our own little robot and 